So we're going to call this meeting to order not at 6.02, but at 7.02. Thank you, Donna. Good. Okay, first thing up, we're going to review and approve the minutes from April 7th, 2016. Any changes? Everybody get a chance to look them over? Can I have a motion for that? One way. Can I have a second? Second. You can't. You can't oh, you can't. I'll second. Yeah, why not? I would have read them. You can't vote, but you can second. Okay. So, any discussion? Okay, all those in favor of accepting the minutes from April 7th, 2016? <coughs> Opposed? Abstain? One of Everybody else, two? Three. Three. Yes. Lynn Roberts has to abstain. 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 Bill Smith, so three abstain. Okay, so now I need a motion to review and approve the revised minutes of March 8th, 2016. So moved. Do I have a second? Do you need seconds? Anybody want to discuss? Bob, do you want to <coughs> clarify? Well, this is the, the change that we made in the March meeting and as to where the money was coming. And so it was much more clear that what we were doing was paying those expenses in 2016 right. rather than in the 2017 budget where those items were removed from the 2017 to be paid to 2016 and it was a transfer from excessive efficiency to cover the shortfall. Okay, and because it was kind of detailed like he just said, we decided to approve the revised minutes. So all those in favor? Opposed? Abstain? Who has to abstain? I think the new what paper had had something in there that was wrong relative to the Conway. So Keith has to, Lynn has to. There's something wrong with it. Okay. Oh, yeah, and so there's okay. two abstentions, Bob. Got it. Got so many papers. Yeah, there's a lot of papers. Jeez. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so we're going to move along and uh, financial statements. Um, Patty? Madam, Madam Chair. Yes, um, sir. Um, might I uh, uh, interpose a point of uh, parliamentary procedure here? Um, could we perhaps prevail upon our, the new member to introduce himself? Um, before uh, that's we, before actually we carry on me. On? So yes, you can. Um, okay. Damian Fosno. 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 Tyler. Okay, um, Damian. This is everyone. <laughs> <laughs> so now we'll throw it back at you, Phil. <laughs> Wonderful. We'll introduce ourselves. <laughs> Phil Cantor Conway. Junior Sunderland. Lynn Roberts, Sunderland. Bob Decker, Deerfield. Bob Hallow, Wheatley. Matt Cavanaugh. Hardy Barrett. <laughs> Cindy Womack Conway. Bill Smith, Wheatley. Mary Raymond, Deerfield. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Where are you from? I'm from Deerfield. Deerfield, okay. Yep. I went and introduced myself, and so I thought, oh, we're all done. Yeah. Bob, Bob, Bob Lesko. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's taking Alan Lynn's position. Yeah. Okay. Okay. The priest, this is Father Darius. No. <laughs> okay, thank you, Phil. Okay, so now we'll go to financial statements. Good evening. Um, tonight you have 26 warrants in the total <coughs> amount of one million four sixty-two five fifty-nine and seven cents. Uh, the purple folder should be going around for signature. Um, you have your April report in front of you. We are running some variances, but I still see us ending up in the good uh, towards the for the end of the year. Um, we do. I am having Mr. Lesko change ch ch um, chase down some bills because we did have a little bit of plowing, and even though it's May 10th, I don't have those bills yet. Yep. So uh, Mr. Lesko is going to chase those bills down as well as any back, you know, backlog of jam rock billing that we tend to get towards the end of the year. We're shaking all those trees right now so that we'll have everything accounted for. Um, we did finally pay for the elevator um, and what we did was we negotiated a five day penalty um, so we saved about $1,200. I tried to get some you know damages for being stuck in the elevator but <laughs> it just weren't budget. I think we considered that entertainment. <laughs> yes everyone else did. Uh, so that's all I have. Oh and you did get mailed um, last week your audit reports from Scanlon and they will be here in June to discuss the audit report with you 
I will not be here. Um, so if there's any questions you guys have for me, could you email me prior? That's all I have, unless Mr. Decker has some questions. Well, I, I just noticed that in one of the reports, there was. Well, not about that. No, we can't that's, talk about that June. tonight. That's June, Bob. You asked a lot of questions. Uh -oh. No, I yeah. mean about the financial uh -oh. statement. <clears throat> So now I haven't looked at it yet, Patty. I just want to make sure that we have sufficient funds to we pay are, all so the we bills. Are, we are, right now we're looking good. Because we don't want to, the excess of efficiency has been rated and there's not much left left there. It's been utilized. Well, it's rated, it's gone. Right? Okay, moving along. We have public comment and we actually have public who wants to make a comment. Paul Newland? Yes, hi. I'm here as a private Waitley uh, resident. I'm also on the select board, so some of what I'll say may reflect the select board and <coughs> some may not. So I'm not speaking on behalf of the select board. We haven't discussed uh, an issue that's before us all and has been before us all, but I felt a personal need to let you know my feelings uh, and for what that's worth. We have bought a building in Waitley and it is uh, presently only partially occupied. Our intention was always to how, have it housed the South County EMS system, uh, but this is taking a very long time and we're sitting there with an unoccupied space and it's my understanding that the school board is looking for a new home for the superintendent's office. And, um, I know we have discussed this, and there is some interest among many people in Waitley to have that building occupied as soon as possible. Right now, we're, we're not making any rent on the space. That we, we bought that building on the understanding that Skims would occupy it. We bought it in good faith and in trust, and now we've just seen an RFP that uh, that implies the RFP is looking issued by the town of Deerfield to find uh, a home for Skims in Deerfield, it seems, from the language of the RFP. Now, maybe I'm misinterpreting that, but that signals to us that we're not gonna have any occupants in there for an indefinite future. And personally, I would like to see an occupant in there as soon as possible. And it's my personal feeling that the, uh, the uh, superintendent's office might make a very suitable occupant. I'm not saying that that's how I would vote on it, but that's how I feel personally right now. I'm very frustrated with this entire procedure, and I know that other people, I can say this with, with very high confidence, other people are also very frustrated with the time that this is taking, and, um, and we're concerned. We're concerned about Waitley's finances, we're concerned about the use of the building, and we want to get on with things. So I just wanted, I, I heard you were having, a, I just this morning, uh, I was told you're having a meeting, and I thought it would be a good thing to come here and let you know at least how I feel. And I don't think I'm alone feeling this, but I can't say anything other than this is my feeling right now from what I know, and we'll be meeting together with you all on May 31st uh, to discuss possible future events. So I thank you for your attention <coughs> and I put that out there for what it's worth. Well, thank you for coming in and um, speaking like that. I know Marty has mm -hmm. been dealing a lot with this issue and I think we're going to be getting a lot deeper into it. Bob? Yeah. The piggyback on Paul's, uh, you know, I'm mm -hmm. one of the people that's been staying on trying to stay on top of this to, since January when we showed interest the school right. showed interest and next you know Deerfield had a petition and we had to wait for you know their uh, town meeting to find out what was going to go on and next you know it got delayed again and it just seems like that was a almost a waste of three and a half months that we could us <coughs> being, you know the superintendent's office could have been doing something so you know I've been me and Marty have talked many times about this and you know well I worked I worked hard and in good faith to get Skims a house and represented that to 
to the Waverly residents, and, and they voted to get the building with that understanding. And now I'm, I'm feeling like, you know, I, I hope that was the right thing to do. I did it in good faith and conscience. And, uh, and now I'm looking out for our interests by pursuing whatever other options are available to us. Because personally, I like the idea of skims over there in Waitley mm -hmm. from a selfish point of view, from my own you know, point of view. And I think it's, according to the Board of Oversight, it's, it's the best place for it. And that's what we've heard repeatedly. Yet it's still not occupied. So I'm concerned about that also. So, so there. Thanks, Paul. That's it. Thanks Thank for you. coming in. Thanks. Anybody else have a comment or a question? Okay. Moving along. Thanks. Student um, report, student advisory. Yes, yeah, I'm supposed to be here. I don't know. She, she runs late. Well, let's squeeze her in. All right. Okay. We um, have unfinished business in the form of central office updates. <clears throat> yeah. So I have a couple of things tonight to give you. Um, and I've invited Bob Letzko to come. And I passed out some costs for you, and we'll get to that in a minute. But here's here's what I would like to recommend to you folks, because as Paul said, this has been dragging on forever. Um, I feel like I come and report information to you every month, and then I go and gather more information, and nothing is happening. Um, and we're running out of time. Um, so I would I would propose that regardless of what you do that we form a little committee. I will dedicate myself for the next two months to work with a small committee um, <coughs> to determine with your input what option that we pursue next. I see it as three options. Um, pursue the Wakeley building and give permission <coughs> for me and the committee. I've already made an appointment to meet with the uh, Waitley Select Board on May 31st, it's their next meeting, to give them a proposal. And they would honor the same monetary deal that they were going to honor with Skims, which was about $1,000 a month in rent. They would foot the bill for um, the renovations initially because it's improvements to their building, and then tie that into a monthly amount. Um, I've talked with Patty, the month, money that we would be saving from electricity and heating would certainly cover that rental. So to, to pursue that, that's one. Two, I also forwarded to you the reports from the Department of Public Health. Hopefully you had a chance to read those. Again, it's showing that it's not a dangerous building, but it's showing that there are some things that we should do to make it more comfortable um, for the people who occupy it. So Bob has some of those cost recommendations. The problem with that, as you all know, if you, any of you own an older home or a business, once you start opening things up, people find things and then you have to bring things up to code. So even though their initial renovations um, or things that we have to address don't seem so insurmountable. My fear that they're going to come in and say, okay, now you need to make it handicapped accessible and your electricity and et cetera, et cetera. And if you weren't agreeable to do that, um, to have this committee ascertain the needs and the actual amount of space for the people who work in central office and then sit with Darius and see if we couldn't make a plan for housing people at Frontier. Personally, ideally, Waitley Town Offices makes total sense. As a Deerfield resident, I think it is a perfect location for scams. However, when I met with the town administrator yesterday, the RFP has gone through five revisions. It is not entirely finished yet once it is finished they then have 120 days Waitley does or anybody does in order to respond so that means that Waitley is without any tenants until September 1st that is not a good time for a school system to move into new facilities <clears throat> I will also tell you 
that the town of Waitley just lost a major tax revenue source recently because a company is either moving out of town or filing some sort of legal standard, but it's about a $200,000 tax um, decrease in revenues. So they are not wanting to have an empty property either. So I think this may be a pretty good time to enter into some sort of more formal conversation with them. So that's what I'm proposing. Three options, form a committee to work with me. Um, I've completed the contracts, the policies, the budgets, so all of my big things are done. So now I'm doing a lot of housework and I really want to put this, this issue to bed. So I, I asked Bob to take a look at the Department of Public Health report and <clears throat> to come up with some costs associated with those. And that's what he's done. And then we met again because in order to do this, as we've talked about, the basement with all of the mountain of records, Patty and I have met with a company to digitize the records. Um, and obviously there's a cost to that because if you're gonna have to clean out the basement to tear out the carpet and pull the records, you may as well not put those records back if you're gonna be there. And I think the only way to go is to digitize these. But otherwise, you're going to just be dealing with this problem right. five years down the road. Right. So I guess I'm going to throw it over to you, Bob, if you want to just talk about some of how you broke broke these costs down. Okay. Yeah. What I tried to do is when when Mike Feeney from the BPH came out and looked at the building, he met with us. He toured the building. Um, he interviewed all of the occupants there and he came up with a list of things that he saw as possibly being issues and he summarized them at the end of his report, numbered them 1 through 13 or something like that, and suggested they were things that we could do um, to improve the situation in the building. Were, were um, you there? Were you there when he was there? Oh, yeah. When they were there? Yes, I was. So, um... It, Bill, do you have a question? Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, you well, seem really well, excited. Well, well, no, no, no. Why, why were only seven of the 15 employees interviewed? People didn't have to be interviewed, and some chose not to be. They had two nurses, epidemiologists there, who also took personal information from people, and some people chose not to share them. I didn't happen to be there that day. Patty was out that day, but most other people were there. Um, and you have to know, Phil, in section of the building that's not over the furnaces, which is where most of the, where all the bookkeepers are, that they are not seemingly affected or shared some of the concerns that people on the other side of the building have. So, Bob. Bob. So, basically, he, at the end of his report, he summarized a bunch of things that he thought would, would help in the building. Um, and some of them are, are relatively straightforward. Um, you know, he, he suggested that we get a look inside of the, not the furnace that's actually functioning there now, but the old one that's abandoned in place and make sure there isn't any path for combustion gases to be leaving that for um, going from the, new, the newer furnace, which is not really new, but the furnace is working into the old one. So that, you know, that'll take some digging in there. We'll have to get somebody to actually climb inside of there and take a look at it. Um, but that's relatively straightforward. Um, we, he suggested we add some CO detectors. Um, I put two in the offices immediately after he left. Um, they're not exactly the kind that I'd like to see in there, so I put an allowance in the report to buy some that actually have a digital readout that we can watch in the building. Um, he suggested that we install or, or repair and install bird screens on all the old vents leaving the building. Um, that is complicated by the fact we really got to get somebody with a lift in there up, up to do it. But that, you know, most of those things are small projects. Um, there have been reports of birds um, 
being in the old ventilation ducts, and that was a major concern to him um, because of issues um, with bird dropping. So I think they're backing up what you're saying. Well, they're there all day for me. Can, Marty in the springtime. So it's, it's, it's nice background music when you meet yeah. with Marty. You hear chirping. Lovely, delightful little bird chirps. You think she's got one of those clocks that yeah. chirp on the hour. <laughs> so the, the screens are relatively simple. The cleaning of the ducks is more complicated. And I called a few places and, and got what I think is a reasonable number for that. Um, and then if you go down in the basement where the bulk of the older files are, they're in two rooms that are carpeted. And, right. and they were probably carpeted 50 years ago, and there's no way to get in there and clean them on a regular basis. So really what we need to do there, if we're going to deal with those carpets, is take all the files out of there, rip up the carpets. Probably the cheapest thing to do is seal the floor with epoxy or something like that and then put everything back in there. Um, I put in a chunk of money for a new vacuum with a special filter that will ensure that when we're doing cleaning there, routine cleaning, um, it's not moving stuff around. Because of the some of the complexities with, with, with all of these numbers above, I stuck a contingency in there, so if we decided to do them, I was sure they could get done. Um, Oh yeah, the remedial cleaning, you know, that that's, you know, no matter what we do in the basement there, we are going to end up moving those files around. And if we move the files around, they're all covered with dust and soot, junk um, from years of sitting down there. And what I want to do is get a contractor in there that'll set up negative air and clean everything so that we're not making a mess. And even if we send somebody in there to do digital records conversion, they're not going to go in there until we clean it up to begin with. So that's something that just has to be done. <coughs> and, you know, they made some suggestions that really aren't going to cost us anything. You know, they, they suggested that we remove some of the plants. Um, and I looked, because we discussed it earlier today, I looked to see exactly why. They, they said it's just because occupants of a building some, some people are sensitive to pollen and mold. Mm -hmm. So having a lot of plants in the building could, could be part of what people are complaining about. And they also suggested that we make drinking water available, which you do, so there's really no issue there. So I, I kind of subtotaled everything at that point. And to me, if we're gonna stay there any amount of time, that's kind of the bare minimum stuff. But there's also th three things that he suggested in his report that are not inexpensive and you know could have a lot of difficulties associated with them. One of the things that he observed and, and got from interviewing people is we have issues during dry period with a lot of dirt from the fields around that building blowing into the building. And his observation was that can have pollens in it, molds in it, um, and fertilizers and insecticides that the farmers are using. So he suggested that we fence around the building with a, with a chain link fence and a wind barrier, which is complicated for lots of reasons. But, Mainly you know, because we don't own the land. So, <laughs> so that's problem that's one Yeah, that's one complication. You know, I just kind of walked around the building and figured that the two exposures um, to the west and to the north or where most of that's coming from and that's about 460 feet and if, if we fence that off with that kind of fencing there's a number that we would have to spend. Um, he also talks about ventilation in the building. Um, there is no, the only ventilation in the building is the, is the window. If you, <coughs> if you open a window you get some ventilation. We also but, get the dust. <laughs> that's right. Um, so, you know, adding mechanical ventilation to that building is, is, is complicated. We would have to put an air handling unit in, in, the, in, in the attic and <coughs> add some to the ductwork that's already there. And Because he said, you know, 
the way he talked about the ventilation, he didn't say it was a have to be. He said it was kind of, it was something that may help. So I kept carry that number a little lower. And he also talked a lot about meticulously cleaning the building. We've got a part-time person in there that works a few hours a week. And, you know, we clean the building, but we don't meticulously clean the building. So I put an allowance in there um, for, for essentially a half-time custodian. Um, and then, so, you know, there's, there's that chunk of money related to the DPA, DPH review, but I also want to keep bringing up that doing that does not in any way solve or, or help a whole bunch of other issues in that building. I mean, we don't know if next week, next month, or next year, the furnace there is gonna quit. That's a very old furnace, and I've maintained all along that just replacing it in place with a similar furnace is not the solution. We really need to do something to the distribution system. So that's an expense, and if we, if we do something with the boiler, we have to do something with the asbestos that's on the boiler um, and the piping in the building. Um, the building doesn't have a fire alarm system. Um, there's issues with emergency egress and getting in and out of that building at in different locations. The building is not accessible. and You walk into the building in the middle between two levels. So really, if you were gonna make that building accessible, you'd have to do it with a either a two-step lift or a two-step elevator, which would be hugely expensive. Um, and there's electrical and plumbing issues there, and the uh, office space does not work well for the occupants. Um, you know, breaking that up and putting partitions or something in there would, would make it a lot better. And there's issues, you know, I put a small amount of money in here for issues with the envelope. Um, and that goes all the way from the fact that dirt and dust blows in the building when the wind is blowing, but also in the winter if you walk around that building and feel around the edges of the building and the, and the windows and the radiator, there's tons of cold air. There's, a, there's just work that needs to be done. So I'm not making any recommendations here. I'm just trying to quantify what I see as some of the issues in the building. Yeah. Your $10,400 figure for the custodian is that it? That's over 20 hours a week. Uh, so we're going to have to pay fringe benefits on that if we if Good we have question. an employee. Yeah, yeah. So the cost that cost may very well double. I, I'm and and I'm not saying we should hire a custodian. I'm just saying if we follow those recommendations, I, I know, but that's meticulously I, clean the building. That's what it would take. No, I just pointing out. <laughs> yeah, and that is that's the and, and actually the the ten thousand dollars was I was figuring. 10 hours and, and adding the hours that people are already working. But you, you're right, there, there's other costs associated with that. Marty, what I'd like to do, I think the board ought to authorize you to negotiate, to form your subcommittee, negotiate a memorandum, an intermunicipal memorandum of agreement, uh, and try to bring it to the board in June uh, for action. And uh, you pretty much know what the costs are. Mm -hmm. We just, but we need to. If we, it should come now and get it over with. Because I think if you go to try to consolidate the existing classroom space we have right now, uh, it, it's going to be very disruptive. And especially if you're going to try to do it by September first. You're talking about every one year. Yeah, I'm I, not recommending there, but no, I. No, but I'm saying is there's no other option. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and I don't think that that would work. But I, I think we ought to negotiate the intermunicipal agreement with the town of Whaley and, and bring it to the board for action in June. We don't have to go to bidding. It's a negotiation mm -hmm. between. We don't have to do an RFP. I don't think. No, you don't. And and I think we just need to to move it forward. And if it's a, if it's a thousand dollars a month, and well. I'll back up. It, it was the same Roughly. rate that they negotiated Roughly. with Stems, which is about a thousand. Yeah. Like and that will give us sufficient square footage. Mm -hmm. Correct. So it's not, 3,000 square feet yeah. from what I understand. And it's more square footage than we have today. And, and I think it would probably work. And, and the figure that you 
my understanding is correct, the utilities are included mm -hmm. in those those numbers. There right. may be some additional costs based upon whatever renovations we want to mm -hmm. do. There uh, will be. And I don't know whether or not we're going to have to buy some uh, dividers between the various workstations. We will. Right now it's an open space. Yeah. They've contracted with a um, outside group that comes in and does modular. Yeah. And they're, um, they're soundproof. Um, all the electronics are built into the walls. Yeah. And they've already, the town of Waitley already voted during their town meeting to set aside money to do that renovation. We would ask them to wrap our costs in with that and then parcel it out so that we wouldn't have to come up with an additional, you know, large sum of money. Um, I know we have some money still in our uh, central office building fund. Um, $58,000. Well, I'm not sure. Let's find out what the actual but amount is. I would just, Bob, if you're going to do that, I would. that should be on the record. I'm not in agreement with that at all. Just, I, mean, I don't know how other people feel about what that. What should be on the record? What's not just on the record? I'm saying. That, that should be a motion and, and whatever. Just um, Oh, to do what he's saying? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, we're yeah. not going to do that yet. No, okay. no, I think well, we I'm need just letting them talk. I okay. think we need to, to vote to, to do this. Uh, we don't have to vote it tonight. She can bring the whole package back to I us. I think it's a good idea. The first meeting in June, and we, we can either talk. go yes or no. I'm just saying we need to go forward. Well, and, if the committee desires so, I would like to have some sort of affirmation. I don't want to sit before the select board with my committee and greatly and say, I have no idea if the school committee is going to support this. I don't want to waste their time. So if you're not in favor of it and you want me to pursue, or the committee wants to pursue something else, that's fine. I'm, I'm needing some sort of direction from you all tonight. Do you have any idea what it would cost us to believe? I have no idea. That's where we have our That's why I'm hoping they have a committee. Make it six figures. The contract rate for Sitterly to move per hour is $248. Okay. It takes about four hours to move four people from one side of UMass to the other. I just did it. That's the only thing I know. Um, it's expensive, and that's a contract rate. We'd probably pay more because that's. Well, I'm just looking at the cost of moving as opposed to $154,800 which I consider lost money. Yep. All these things that Bob was talking about. It's just that's lost in. money. That's yeah. like putting in, putting ten ten thousand dollars into a fifty seven Buick. So, so the I mean, the president yeah. didn't have any miles though, thank you. Or to move in the deck chairs on the Titanic, so, right? Marty, we do have forty thousand dollars, just under forty thousand dollars in your account that you just checked. What kind of a committee would you like with you? I would like two or three people. Uh, I would love to have some representatives from Waitley and some representatives from Deerfield because I think these are two towns that have a vested interest. And uh, I'm not excluding Sunderland. I was going to say, I got to shut out. <laughs> no, I'm thinking Tom was like, like go to the hills. But yeah. I, I think two or three people who would have some time to devote in the next six weeks because I'm looking at this as a six, six week project. Okay. Like, I don't really understand your design. I mean, the, I'm the, trying to clean it up before I leave, though. Right, so. I, I get that. And I'm okay. Not, I'm not, but the, the report indicates that there is no objective, quantifiable health concerns with the building. Correct. That uh, what we're talking about is alleviating hay fever. No. No, what we're and, talking about is no, no accessibility, no fire alarm, yeah, no things. egress, yeah. no eat. Right. Cleaning up records. And I'm running out of fingers. Right. And it's more we're, than we're and, 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 and a chain on the, one of the exits. No, we are grandfathered. Grandfather? This opportunity is Do you have not an employee in the wheelchair? Your grandfather? No, it's, we're not going to. Uh, this opportunity is not right. going to be presented. So if you have an again. employee who has to slide on her butt down the stairs to get to the toilet. We just had that happen. We, we've had that foot twice. surgery. Sure. And we have, if we have to put an elevator in at some point, it may get stuck. And I still have employees who are not able to work there. Um, Louise Law hasn't worked well, at all. Well, I wasn't going to say, but oh, there, are, uh, yeah, but there are some people who have not been able to work there, and they now have to work in, in other facilities. And it is so. more than hay fever. You've got some people in there, myself included, who have chronic asthma, mm -hmm. and it's much more. We've got people who are in, have chronic rashes. <laughs> it's not hay fever. Uh, hay fever is seasonal. This is year 
long. And that's why I said it's not that it's a dangerous building, but it is very unpleasant for numbers of people. But your things that are coming to a head fill are all of those records down there. Those records have to be digitized. Nobody has ever addressed that. And we, ha we have to do that. And if we have to pull them out in order to be digitized, then let's get rid of the carpet. And if you can get rid of the carpet, you know, I mean, that's why the list goes on and on and on. And Bob's point is, we can do all of this. We can spend $65,000 and get rid of the carpet and pull the records out and clean the place up and get some CO2 monitors and have the birds blocked from being in my chimney every day. And the furnace could still go out tomorrow and you still have to pay another 80,000 and everything else on top. And so it gets to a point of how long does this committee you own the building. How long do you want to keep addressing this? But is it fair to, I'm sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. No, no, is no. it fair to ask us to address, we certainly talked about it back then, and I'm not disagreeing with any of your points, but it's it's five weeks between now and the next meeting that you want us to, or you're proposing that we make a decision. And I don't know that that's necessarily enough time. It's certainly a lot of time to gather a lot of information, form a committee, have a lot of conversations about all the different options and, and what's down the pike. But, five weeks to like pick the whole thing up and move it you wouldn't do that what, what i'm asking no but like to make the decision to spend the money I, well, mean, I think that's is this the first time you've heard about this judy tonight no no no. i heard about it two meetings ago i i heard it i listened to all the things i talked we talked about the the dph study like i get i've been reading it i'm hearing what they're saying i've been in horrible buildings i know that i've seen the physical effects it has on the people that i've worked with so I understand the environmental conditions and the quality of life issues that we're asking these people to deal with every day when they come into work. It's not fair. But what I am saying is that, and I understand that Waitley is right there, ready to roll, but it's bigger than just picking up and moving into Waitley, and I wanna make sure that we have enough time, maybe five weeks is enough time, but I wanna make sure we have enough time to properly address the short and the long-term impact of making this, this decision, that's all. I'm not opposed to people having a safe and healthy work environment. I am, I, but I don't want to feel pressured to like do it just because Marty's leaving in June and the, you know, the new superintendent is coming and you know, I understand I think, you're trying to wrap things up. I want you to wrap things, that's a good note to go out on, mm -hmm. but I just want to feel like I have a little bit of space to think about it. But Judy, what, I think what we're saying is if, if, if our furnace dies tomorrow and it could yeah even though we're not in heating season we're out of there anyway yeah, and you've got to find some place for us to go that's fine and but if that were the case it would be a faster you'd have to spread into the different buildings that were available you wouldn't necessarily be popping into waitley because it wouldn't be available day one you'd have to find a short-term solution and a long-term solution and what we're saying is instead of, uh, we're trying to be proactive and not reactive and we're i think we're all at the point where we're, we are saying this building is no longer feasible to house and we've got the perfect opportunity because if waitley doesn't take us they're going to find another tenant because that's what mr newland told us tonight they bought that building with the intent of having a tenant and if not us, and if not Skims, it will be somebody else. And then we'll have no place to go because we've already done a preliminary survey of what is available for office space in the in the four town area. And there isn't much. And that would be at the retail price of, of renting per square foot. It wouldn't be the deal that Waitley is offering us. And it would cost us a lot more money. And I'm not asking to enter into an agreement with Waitley before the next school committee. All I'm asking is support for a committee to approach them. They may say, you know what? We're gonna stick with scams, sorry. Because they have some very strong feelings about that. Paul I know is one of three members um, on that committee. I know one member feels as strongly against what he said. Um, so it, that is not a done deal. But I don't want us to lose that opportunity and not at least enter into a conversation with them. That's all I'm asking for. And I would bring back that information to the June meeting and say, this is what they're proposing. This is what the cost will be. The 
committee and I would gather information from the modular place and said, this is the cost of doing a mod. If you were to do that, this is the cost of moving. This is the cost, you know, and you'd have all of that. And then you could vote as a committee, yes, that's what we'd like to do. And it will happen over the summer or before school starts or no, we don't want to do that. We may need a special meeting. So, um, actually, this is like one of the issues that I think people in this building, for some reason, are really concerned. This is the one issue that people within this building, uh, I get stopped and uh, opinions freely volunteer on. And I, I, I want to tell you that I've been repeatedly told that there is a belief that there is plenty of room in this building for the superintendent's office to comfortably relocate. And those exact words were used. By and, faculty? Yes. And, and and I would like if you could spit, like address exactly how much room is and how how short you are from being able to house people in this building. How short <clears throat> it's almost like Basic, you gotta take over a wing, don't you? I mean if you basically you'd right. have to take I mean we you know I've gone over preliminary stuff, you know. Um, is I mean, the question is there room? I mean we can make room. You know what I mean? There's, there's, you know, um, in the sense that teachers don't have to have prep periods in their room. You know what I mean? Those kind of things. You can, you can, you can juggle things around. You would be taking office space and putting it into what is conventional classrooms. Um, some of the things that, in the way the current breakdown of the building is and where I would put them, um, there isn't really adequate adult facilities. They'd have to share student facilities or walk a long distance. Um, we'd have to have, you know, there would be some cost to put in new security because it'd be a different entrance because you don't want the public entering the main school office entrance and walking through the whole building in order to have a meeting with so-and-so because it's too much access to a building. Um, in order to use the rooms that I foresee to qu kind of keep it in one area and then have additional offices so that the, you can have private rooms for the superintendent the business manager and the um, SPED director of special education, they all need their own offices because the amount of meetings they have that need to be private. Um, we're really shifting around. Is it possible? Yes, but they're not. It's open space. You're in the middle of a school. Kids are passing in between periods, you know, that kind of thing. And so, like I said, it's possible. And one of your suggestions, Marty, is to have a meeting to meet with me to Mm -hmm. I'll pull out the school map and I'll show you what, I mean, there's, you know, you asked me to look at that and I kind of went through and I drew some stuff up. Um, the problem is that there's no place where they can be, lack of a better term, quarantined from the rest of the building. <laughs> um, there really isn't in the sense that they'd have to have access to, there won't, there wouldn't be any break rooms with running water. There wouldn't be, um, again, staff bathrooms. Cause, um, the way the staff bathrooms are in the old so, part of the building and the new part of the building, there's there's are just you not. suggesting that there are quarry problems with some of these superintendent staff? No. No. Visitors. 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 People coming in all the time from, yeah. from the public for different business that they need to conduct. So that was one of the other things. I had three suggestions tonight. A, to form the committee. Have the committee look, meet with Jerry, look at space allocations here. Have the committee look at the needs of the central office to come up with a scenario if we were to move and if we were to move to Waitley or C to make a recommendation to start some of the work in central office. So that that's where we are. I'm just right. looking for a committee to be formed. I would just like to say from if that if that area is also not climate controlled, we deal with a lot of technology and the there is no energy. AC in any of the rooms I'm offering. <laughs> that, that's not going to work. <laughs> in any of them, there's not no AC. Uh, I think this list of stuff here, for the most part, is money poorly spent. If we, if we spend I that money, and agree. you know, I think we need to move forward. And uh, you know. I, I have a question for you, Bob. Not you, Bob. You, Bob. Okay. Too many Bobs. On number seven, that add mechanical ventilation, that would be in the attic? Probably, yes. So would, is the attic strong enough to support that, or is that something where now we're looking at additional construction and do you see what I'm saying? Like yeah. things go along? My, my simple answer to that is, is probably, but it's something that we would check. 
but I, I don't I don't I don't see that as right. a, I don't see that as a big issue. Oh, okay. I'd love to see well, that. Well, I've got a minute to talk. I know. Also, I just can't imagine getting up there. It's getting up there. Terribly for access. For access. I, I do want to say that you know we, we should somehow acknowledge what the state did for you know Michael Feeney and his crew came in and they spent a lot of time and they did a really good job and they, they you know they did it for us at no cost and they're they're good practical people and you know whether for our reasons or not we choose to, to do what they suggested we should at least acknowledge the fact that they put a real effort into oh, it yeah. did a good oh, job yeah. and great people to work with they were very yeah, I, and acknowledged Bill for being our connection. I'm not critical of the report at all. Yeah, I know. I, I'm just saying that I think we're, we're if we spend a half million dollars to do no, all I, these things, I agree. that, okay. that we're, it's not cost effective and it's not long term. Well, uh, Bob had something. You know, for whoever is thinking that, whether it's good or bad, if you haven't been to the central office and you haven't gone down solar, Make an appointment, go see Rhonda. Rhonda will take you downstairs in that basement. I've been down there many times. And just walking down there stirs the mold up. So if you haven't gone there, go make a visit before you make your determination, maybe next month. Um, that you called it a cellar, I think is the absolute reason we shouldn't be there. It's a cellar. It's not a place for files. A place for files is in a computer. It's not in boxes. It's not piled on top of filing cabinets. It's not in a cellar. They need to be organized. The people need to be out of a place that's gross. This is one of those like this is one of those um, staples commercials. It's easy. Sometimes the easiest solution really is the best solution. There's a place. We need a new place. So let's pick up all of our dusty, gross, nasty stuff, clean it all up, digitalize it, and move it to the nice, clean place. That's reasonable. We can move it here, but that's not easy. It would be obnoxious. It would be complicated. It would be costly. Their idea, the Whaley idea, it makes sense, and it's easy and we don't have to talk about it ever again. I don't want to have this conversation a year ago. I didn't want it, or for a year from now, I didn't want it a year ago. I don't want it now. Let's just take care of this and move on. She's not asking us to reconstruct DNA. She's just asking us for permission to enter into a conversation. I think a conversation would be great. Let's move it along, get this done, and we never have to talk about it again. Can you explain that a little more thoroughly? What? What? Okay. Once more for the record. Well, I, um, we have a question. So either whatever option we choose, there's some kind of a cost with the records. We have to do something with the records. Correct. Yes. Right. Right. And the minute you start touching the everything starts happening with the carpet, with the oh yeah, policy. yeah. Our oh, yeah. initial quote is ninety-five thousand. Now that's a scary number. Yeah. However, it can be done in stages. And and. They were pretty overwhelmed coming into our basement as well, looking at everything. So, and these are people who do this for a living, and they were they were like a pole at, at our situation. And can any of them be destroyed? After yes. we digitize them, they're all going to be destroyed. No, I mean, yes, we we can go through them ahead of time, a to cut down the costs, like a certain number of years. But they did that last year. They went through. Correct me if I'm wrong. Three or four yeah, tons they had did. shredded we did. last year. Right, but there are some things you know we we got to keep some permanent records. So you need people on a committee. We need. I, I really would like a committee. I would really love a motion. So moved. There you go. Can I have a second? Second. Is there any more beat this to death discussion? No. I'm going to turn moldy. Damien, you want to chime in? No, I'm just really just trying to soak it all in. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to our group. Okay, so I have a motion and a second and no further discussion. So all those in favor of letting Marty form her committee. And I believe on that, I would just like to let you choose your own committee or ask. No, I would like to, I, I'm serious. I would like people who have some time. If this is a really busy time for you, um, then please, I don't want to, 
and it doesn't have to be just Waverly or Deerfield, but I thought those two towns had a vested interest. But if somebody has the time, to okay, so let's time. let's vote the motion first, okay. and then we can go on to that. So all those in favor? Thank you very much. Okay, so now forming the committees. Anyone feel strongly members? about being on the committee? Bob? I'll Bob? Say, yeah. Bob? <laughs> Phil? Phil, Bob, and Bob. Oh boy. <laughs> can you all play nice for us? Phil, can you have an open mind? Phil has a very open mind, actually, sometimes too. Madam Chairperson, thank you all. <laughs> okay, I will be in touch with Bob, Bob, and, and Phil. <laughs> Okay, so now that we're done with that, um, yeah. moving on to new business, discussing and voting on policy sections D through J. Uh, yeah, thank you, Mr. Let's go. That box. Thank you, Bob. 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 Thank you, for a long time. <clears throat> okay, okay, so moving policies. Um, I am going to suggest to this committee that you do what the other committees do. I originally brought to each committee meeting, this is one copy of policies D through J, and I had a copy for everybody, and I had to ask somebody to carry the box for me and somebody to carry the box home because nobody took one. So I'm just bringing one sample tonight. Um, I would ask that you would honor the work of the policy subcommittee and approve policies D through J. So moved. And we're, all, and we're all done with policies after. Policies are done. The book is done. It's re rewritten. So they, did a, nice, they did, did a nice job. They did. And it will be online um, this summer. Excellent. Good. So it will be good to go for you all in September. And um, congrats for spending that much time with Patsy to everybody that did. <laughs> People did a, a, a really good job. So okay. do we have a motion? We have a second? motion. We have a second. All yep. those in favor? So yeah, yeah, yeah. So for clarification, so that's now actively the new policy that handbook I'm running off of. Um. Or may, is it is it starting is it starting for next year? A through J starting for next year. I, I mean, once they voted, isn't it isn't it effective I think immediately? It's immediate, but you still have two more that I have to bring to you in June. Two more sections. I got it, but so I just I'm just asking so I can get a copy of it if I'm now running on a new policy. Pass that to Mr. McGuffin. <laughs> <laughs> so she doesn't since, have to carry it. Since I was looking through my policy handbook today. <laughs> And oh my God, it's heavy. Would you like an effective date in the minutes for that? July well, 1st? I still have Sunderland to approve it, so this is not the last committee meeting. But we can if you, once you guys approve it, I, it's good for me. It doesn't matter we what Sunderland says. That's right. Yeah. Effective July one. You can have it effective July one. Yeah. So all new policies are effective July one of these things. So that that'll make, that'll make my life easier because then I have to read through it to make sure that we're following all. July one. All right. So that was just added to the motion. Because you know I've got okay. the very page mark. Yeah. Sometimes yeah, right. <laughs> it was already in the motion. Okay. It was yeah. in the motion. That's right. I just added it to. It. Okay. Got it. Unless anyone's opposed. Okay. Nine minutes out. Patty, did you pass those out? Here to your side, you one of the yellow stripes? Yes, sir. Question. Um, these are pay raises. We're in the process of collective bargaining with our um, organized people. Okay. Oh, yeah, we are. Uh, we're finished. But it hasn't been reported to the board yet. Correct. And it hasn't been, has the contract with the employees been ratified by the employees? That part I don't know. No. So I would hold teachers, on. We're not voting tonight. We're just bringing them to you. We vote in June. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. Um, just remember that I believe a year or two ago, um, I believe it was people from this committee um, wanted, didn't want to have to vote on the same night that they saw these. So we brought them to you in May so that you can vote well, in Well, that's June. a good idea. And, and we should act on, on the ones that we collectively bargained before we. Yeah, today. Right, so we're not. Well, it took me 40 years to get it when I got it. 
Well, he was the one that. There you go. So, um, so bring him back. We'll talk about him in June. Okay. Don't lose that one. for school committee members. Before we even get into this discussion, because we are heading towards um, hopefully moving the superintendent's office, and because I have looked through that paperwork and it's, I'm really not in favor of this, I would like to table that and just move along. What, anybody else what, has any what I would like to about. talk about stipends for school committee members. I, I would like to talk about it, but I'd like to talk about it with the idea of it not starting until July of 17 and not starting soon, but in July of 17. Okay, and, but before and, we and talk then we about can put it, money in the budget and we can be up front about it and everything else. And we don't have to act on it tonight or not. Uh, the town of Deerfield's town meeting decided they were going to pay the chairman of the board of selectmen six thousand, and the other board members five thousand dollars. Okay, but so before we talk record. about it, I would like to take a straw vote and see if you are in favor of paying the school committee stipends. Phil, um, could I just yes no? I, I I just want to know if we should go further on in discussion. Um. We don't have the authority to make that decision. Yes, we do. No, we don't. Yes, we do. Not, not by ourselves. Yes. The regional right, school committee said that. Can, can, um, can I, may I, may I approach the chair briefly? Oh, we got it. Uh, <laughs> can we be pale? Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> our attorney is here. I, we yeah. did ask um, our attorney. He's right here. <clears throat> what to say, Phil? Can you give us what, what it says is that town meeting and our uh, majority of town meeting would have to approve. We're a regional school committee. Majority of town meeting, uh, of, of uh, majority of towns would have to approve the school committee compensation theory, uh, which uh, should be enough to table this and move on. Could we? Uh, what our, attorney said? our attorney said, A, he had to check to see if it was in the regional agreement, and I said no. There is nothing about school committee members um, receiving pay in the regional agreement, and he felt that it would also have to go before the town meeting. Where is this, this? Obviously, this discussion has taken place somewhere before because he had time to do this, and I know nothing about this until I sat down in this chair. It was in our packet. It was so, in your packet. Yeah, yeah, but that's the first time. No, I pestered Cindy about Bob putting it had forward. emailed me and asked me to put it on the agenda. He had emailed me and Donna and asked that it go on the agenda. So then I emailed Donna and said, I think we should put this on the agenda because a member has asked. Donna then approached me and I met with our attorney and I said, this is coming forward because we just had the Deerfield School Committee or Deerfield Town Meeting. And at the Deerfield Town Meeting by a very close margin, they voted substantial increases for the select board. And that's where the conversation came from. So then I, I asked the attorney, he asked if it was in the original agreement, I said no, and he said it would have to go before town meeting. Then I asked Donna to do a search on her listserv of the communities that do pay stipends, and that's what you have here. Um, as you can see, pardon? I haven't seen, re most of them are the, in the eastern part of the state. I couldn't find anybody other than the Long Meadow um, that had it. But regardless, it's not going to happen soon. So if it's something you wish to talk about, you would have to get it before town meeting, which would be for next year, and then you'd have to put it into the budget for the following year. So you're talking about two years out. That's my point. I, right. I want to set it out. This, this would have been the year that we could have cast some checks. I mean, we were busy this year. So anyway, that's... That's the history behind it and why it's, it's on the agenda. So can we refer it to the budget subcommittee to look at when they're putting the budget together well, for next year? Well, you have to, you can't do that no, until you get no. town meeting approval. We can't get, we town, get town meeting approval. Town approval. We don't have yeah. to get yeah. And you have to get the original yeah. agreement amended. We have well, to, it doesn't make a lot of difference to me. we have to decide to vote to ask for all this? Do you even want to discuss it? I I think I made myself. Yeah, I want it retroactive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I if 
if it if it came to we were getting paid, I would be donating my money back. That's just me. Do what you want. But I think it's a very long process for a very little bit of money that takes. I don't know that it would even. It might matter to some people, but I'd hate to think you ran for this position for a thousand dollars. That well, there's no minimum of ten no meetings. Would you have? Would you have? I did not do this for the you money. You did not I, do I, it I for the money. I didn't even think it was going to be paid. Well, there's the did you know up front it wasn't going to be paid? Yes, I did know oh, okay. it was going to be. <laughs> Not but on the other hand, we could get school committee sponsored by Berkshire Brewing really, Company and pay us a beer. Collected another check. Yeah, yeah, drink it here. Yeah. 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 Is there any further discussion on this? Yeah, I was going to take my straw poll. You didn't ask the answer yes or no. Uh, you have utterly convinced me. I'm whatever way you're going. You're right now. Yeah, yeah. Do you? I don't want any money. Uh, you asking me? I am. Hey. I, yes I no want to do it yes. as of next year because my term is up next May. So that's a no. Uh, no. I'm a no. What's the question? Do you want to pursue this further about getting stipends for school committee members? Or do you want to just stay home and move on? I haven't had one for 40 years. I don't Why start now? now? Right. Mary? No. And no. Okay, we're done. Okay. Just you know, we're just to let you know, in the town of Waitley, I'm not sure about the other three towns. The town of Waitley, the elementary does get a stipend of, I think it's three hundred and fifty-six dollars this year. So I'm not sure about the other elementary and, and any other other towns. I know what we do here. Here, you're on the elementary. Here, it's a hundred and hundred and fifty for the chairs. Yeah. Big deal. But if I do that, I can't put it on my resume as volunteer. <laughs> 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 Remember moving along. So <laughs> 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 okay, we are going to be out of here by right? 30. So everybody just come out. It's been end together. Okay, we're on the reports. The collaborative. Lynn? Uh, yeah, we had a um, an update from Spiffy, the strategic planning initiative for families and youth. Um, just kind of giving them, a, giving us an update on what they've been doing, surveying 8th, 10th, and 11th graders about substance abuse, bullying, other at-risk behaviors. Um, they talked about the trainings that they've been hosting on adolescent brain development and addiction, school climate, prevention curriculum, that sort of thing. Um, we discussed the collaborative discussed areas of growth this year, um, advocacy with small rural districts, early childhood ed new professional development offerings, um, social justice and equity conversation that they've been having, and a lot of professional development about that. Um, discussed some pay scales, and they wanted everyone, teachers, to look for summer professional development offerings. And it's all online, so check it out for good summer fun. Thank you very much. Yes. Do you have anything to report? Um, only that we had a copy of it, um, and it was more the same conversation that we had had the month before about you know there are more um, small community meetings going on and trying to support those efforts. Meeting with superintendents, writing um, collective letters. Anyone else have any questions? Thank you, Lynn. Um, Principal. So we've had quite a quite a lot happen since we didn't really have a meeting in May, I mean April rather, and talk about what's going on in the school, but kind of just an overview. I know I'm missing some of the things in the past two months, but <clears throat> we are in the middle of MCAS season. Um, middle school science is gonna be administered this week, administered this week. Um, both middle school and high school MCAS is next week, and then we have high school science in the first week of June. Um, we had a successful music telethon on April 14th, and in the event raised over $7,000, which is the highest um, for the telethon so far in its history. And so I want to thank the music department and all the community that supported um, to make the telethon a success. Um, number three, I'm actually, I wrote it was wrong here. The spring concerts are this uh, Tuesday and Thursday. However, the course in strings is tonight and wind is on Thursday. I was going off of what they did last year and I was corrected. So. Um, in fact, if we can get out of here soon enough, maybe we'll catch a little bit of it. And I also want to recognize that the students just finished up their uh, production, their Fred production, which is a student um, organized play in production that they put on. Which is fabulous. Which is fabulous. Which is fabulous. Every year, people should go. 
there we go. Sorry. Um, we have just completed the AP exams. Um, just to let you know, it's kind of it's a big uh, for our school in the sense that we have over 100 students taking 125 exams. And so if you can kind of do the math in your head, if we have approximately, we have under 100 students in both the junior and senior class, that's quite a few students taking AP classes out of the eight subjects we offer. And then we have three who are taking online AP classes. Um, just to let you know where I'm really busy, um, I'm in the middle of an, the hiring replacements for the staff who are retiring or leaving at the end of the school year. Um, and you can kind of read through, but we are, have hired the replacements for our middle school social studies teacher, guidance counselor, health teacher, um, high school special education, for our high school special education and science teacher. We're currently in the process of filling our psychology position and our high school science teacher position and our middle school special education position. And I'll announce all of them at once in probably September. I might be able to have them done by June, but we'll see where we're at. Um, and you should have all received an invitation to graduation on Friday, June 3rd. And so I hope you can attend. Um, and I also wanted to mention that we created a senior board outside of the guidance office. If you want to check it out on your way out or next time you're in the building, the seniors are posting up what they're doing next year so you can see all the different colleges they're going to um, and some service, people going into the service and that kind of thing. It's just a, it's really interesting to see. I know we'll give you the report later on where our graduates have been accepted and so on and so forth, which the guidance department puts out. But it's nice to see it um, as we say goodbye to those seniors. Um, I also wanted to thank you. I'm sure Marty's going to say the same thing, but thank you for getting us through this budget season as we got Conway to approve it last week, and so we're four for four. Last night. Last, last night. night. I was there. <laughs> Still <laughs> out. Um, and the student council wasn't here, but they were going to announce that um, we have a field day spring field day where we're going to take the part of the last period on the 19th to do garage band outdoor games and slushies now it's or something. part of the last period? Well, I don't want to say it's Wasn't the entire it last period. period. It's like an hour, okay? you got to work on that half day. I know. They, they fight for the full period and I, I make them at least Visiting scholars thing didn't crack the lineup. You know what? We have a visiting scholar coming. <laughs> In fact, I don't have the details in front of me on it, but the library is putting together a visiting scholar program. We, I believe there's someone from CNN coming to meet with students about what they're doing. Is that what you're talking about? No, no, no. The uh, archaeologist, the... Uh... Oh, no, that didn't crack. I have lots of those things happening. No. Sorry. Okay. Hey. Um, and then on the back side, there's a bunch of the upcoming dates of all the other things going on. So, fast and furious as we wrap up this week. Questions, comments, concerns? What is step hey, up day? Hey, superintendent's report. Whoops. Oh, I'm glad you brought that up. I should have had it on the main part. Step up day um, is the sixth grade is coming to visit the school. Mm -hmm. At the same time, we have the eighth grade visit the high school. And so it's one big, massive one visit big the next. Step. One big, major step. And so um, we rotate the sixth grade through the teachers, and then we have them learn about the different clubs and sports. They have lunch here, and they do a tour of the building. So we do yeah. that. And then the eighth grade goes to the high school. They go through the core subjects to look at expectations and some of the things they can choose for next year. You know, um, if they choose to do honors and that kind of stuff, and they get an idea. So they do that just for one period. In the last period. What's the date? May twenty fourth. Um, I'm obviously young enough to remember Step Up Day from oh. into Frontier, and it was it was pretty scary. But pretty we try cool to make too. it less scary. Yeah, well, now you have I, think, I think old school, like, they tried to the scare you. Old school, it was like, like well, scare you, scare you straight. Yeah, they probably <laughs> brought down six or football <laughs> players. <laughs> no. And bet you at the door no. and gave me that. No, no, no. It was the eight doors back then, though. But I, th I just think it's a good thing, because then at least you get a once walk through before you're here on your own trying to find a way. So, yeah. good job. Thank you. Yeah. Um, okay, so, Superintendent. Okay, so you have a written report, but I also have to add a couple of things. The only thing, and you can read this at your leisure, I just want to emphasize that the um, Rural Consortium Committee of Superintendents, we still continue to meet. We met uh, yesterday. <coughs> yes, it was just yesterday. Um, and we are meeting again in two more weeks. Um, we are putting together additional language for our uh, state legislators. Um, and trying to give them some ideas and suggestions about how charter schools are impacting us and gathering some more data. What we have heard very clearly from them is they don't want to hear any more complaining um, and they want us to come up with some solutions. And so that's what we're working on hard. So there is a core group of us, um, about 
15 superintendents, primarily from the from the Berkshires, um, and I, I think the one and Plavin is probably as far east as we go, um, working together. So um, Mike Bonacani, superintendent of Mohawk, is leading this charge, and that's going well. Is, um, is your legislative theory that you're working with the spot Wisconsin Spar City? Yeah, that's what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, we're trying to do that, but we're trying to get them accurate data too, because sometimes some of the sources. It's amazing how some of the data in some of the state sources are skewed and not accurate. So we're we're trying to get them real real time data to work with. Um, yes, I agree with Darius. I'm very happy the budget season is over. Thank you very much um, for everybody. We completed, the, like I said, the. Um, policy book last week and we completed negotiations last Thursday so thank you to everybody who served on all of those committees all I can give you are cookies and my thanks but you they, have were that. they were good the other night yeah, yeah. yeah. at least Conway gave you the standing O last standing night. O from Conway last night that was very nice and very unexpected so Conway um, that's right yeah, I was quite taken aback that's by right. that big love in Conway. No, a lot of love in Conway so you received a letter. Um, Darius has been working with his neighbor, Mr. Charles Smart, um, for many months. And he has wanted to donate money to the school. He is, uh, if you don't have a copy of his letter, I have copies here. I will have them go each way. He, some of this was delayed because of some illness for a while, but his, his donation fits the qualifications of our of the school committees being able to accept a donation. Um, he wants to donate $70,000 for the purpose of the scholarship and to benefit the library. He is a longtime teacher. Um, his wife is a longtime librarian. They are both in their 90s. Um, both lovely people with interesting stories. Um, I have met with our attorney, um, and he has read all of the correspondence. Now we have some details to work out, like obtaining the check. We know that we cannot put it in to high interest yield bond. We, as a school, do not have that ability to do that. But before we can actually accept the check, um, I need the school committee to accept his donation. Motion to accept a donation from this fabulous, incredibly wonderful human being, Charles Mark. Second. Okay. Any other he discussion? Didn't bring any, didn't bring any did bring any arrows. Did he have any arrows? I want to know how he got. Did you ever hear that story? I did, and you know, I I asked him if he would be willing to sell us the land because it borders our playing fields, and he explained that he likes to walk in those woods because it reminds him of his childhood. Yep. We'll let him walk. And. Well, we wanted to develop the field. There would be no woods if we developed the field. So he, we could beat him some, though. We could keep him back. <laughs> he came right. in for the benefit yeah, of the rest of you who don't know the story. He came in many, many years ago to a school committee meeting. Right. He, he had a whole little a quiver full of arrows from the archery class that keep when they shoot, yes, they I keep missing the target. It landed on his property. <laughs> he came walking in with a whole quiver full of arrows and he dumped them on the table. He wanted to know how are we going to stop this madness. So he's under attack. <laughs> you obviously handled the situation well for him to I come know, back. Really. Oh, he's a nice man. He's a very he's nice man. He's a very nice man. We dealt with him when we were building this. Yes. He's a very nice man. And very generous, and he has Still done this in the past. He doesn't want a lot of, no he doesn't really want yes, any notoriety. Yes, he does. I just saw him on Thursday running his bike. Do you want to say anything more? Because you work directly with him. No, I mean, I, when he came in, he just stopped in one day, and I. You know, I immediately called my neighbor. Like, right. Your neighbor was just here because I was like, you, you, I like had him repeat himself because I wasn't sure if he actually was saying the numbers right. Um, but um, no, it was really impressive. I and mean, also at that time it was before we kind of hit a budget shortfall. I originally had hoped to kind of match what he was going to give to the library because we know the library needs a, um, a refreshing. You know, let alone what the envelope has to be done. I wanted to kind of, you know, look at new furniture and that kind of stuff. But because we couldn't match it this year in the budget, um, and he really wants to get this going, not wait it off. So um, we'll try to figure out something. There's, you know, there's certainly lots of things that we can get in the library that we can. Um, um, there's a wish list. list. There's a wish list, and yeah. so we can, and especially something that can also. Um, 
make note of who you know, him and his he and his wife are, and, and, and give us some kind of recognition for him in here as well. So that, that's great. And in the in the foreign language, you know, right now foreign right. language doesn't have a scholarship, um, and to add that to our scholarships, yeah. we give at graduation, um, especially someone who's going to that field. I think it's a it was it was an avenue we did you know right. um, something that we didn't have, and so that's also it's really nice. Is he aware that we, we cannot invest that money in the way he wants to? Uh, yes, I've explained that to him. Um, I just didn't want him to get caught by surprise. Right, right, right. Could, no. could I just uh, make a request for that, that we perform a service? That, um, just from many years dealing with donors, when you have a donor letter that, request, that, that specifies a concern, and his specific concern was that um, the principal of the library money be held in a high yielding like Vanguard like fund instead of a library I, instead of a bank. I've thing. explained that we can't. Yeah. The elite, it's illegal for us to do that. Right, but um, a letter to, is, there. There needs to be like an official uh, from us to him. response to him. Well, there'll along be a document that, that will all have to sign, and then that that forty thousand goes into reserved it, it, for, it's not available for you so, so from a financial perspective we know what we're but the first step was to get you to agree to accept a forthcoming donation so I, that I guess what I'm, what I'm trying to say is that like a concern like that it has to be spoken with we have to speak with the man about that like you can't we can't just do yeah we can't we can't I understand, just, I understand what he's saying is to make sure that it gets clearly addressed and right. that we can't we do his entire out. wish there because I understand what he wants to do. And, I do too. And I, and I still, I, you know, I, I don't know if, if, if Mary could talk to somebody who may be able to look into this, but that we, I, I'm part of a scholarship committee that runs off a trust fund. And how they do it is they put the trust in that outside of the school's name. And I don't know how we do that. Foundation. Well, we you would know, put the, I would, I mean, well, we don't would, have a foundation. We don't have a foundation. No, so. but well, I don't know why we wouldn't just put this with the rest of our uh, our other scholarships, and we do we do have a trust in CMMDT uh, that we use that's deposited that we do get more interest in a bank, but it's not. What he idea. wanted to do is he wanted to get a trust that you know get you know get around five to seven percent, have that five percent seven percent be the scholarship every sure. year, so we. It's indefinite scholarship, and I understand. Sure, yeah. And so, in order, I think, to do that, you have to have a private group to connect them to right. the school or something of that sort, right? That's right. what we're hearing. Maybe you have to buy an annuity to yield that. Yeah, that's, no, a, that's a possibility. Well, yeah. Okay, so because the idea is very nice. Yeah. The idea of what he wants yeah. to do is very nice. We're going to check into that, so that that concern will be. Taken and I think care our of. attorney's going to have to draw a response yeah, once the check is, okay. is actually issued. So, so that should not. <laughs> Um, bar us from voting on this now. Correct. So we've got a motion, a second. All those in favor? Okay. Um, Marty, the yeah, one. I just wanted to bring you up to date on the incident that I sent the email to you. This is a lesson in in social media of how this um, kind of transpired so quickly. So Darius made me aware of the incident this morning. I came to the school. Um, we talked about it. It did not seem to be. I mean, we knew there was no imminent danger of uh, students was, had been addressed and student was no longer on the property. The police had been here and confiscated the vertical. Um, however, we did have some students who texted the Channel 22 high report. And then Channel 22, um, I then went off to my Deerfield roofing building meeting at the town hall and um, had been contacted during my meeting that 22 had been contacted. I was contacted, Darius was contacted, the police chief were contacted. So I immediately left that meeting, went into the Deerfield Police Department, got Darius on the phone, we had a conference call. We wanted to have the same information go out from all three of us. And so that, that response was drafted. We sent them almost all simultaneously. Um, the reporter took our draft, put it on their Channel 2 website as if it came from the Deerfield Police, uh, no, Deerfield Chief of Police. And it did mention that she had gotten the same report from me. Then we drafted, uh, knowing at that point that, you know, it was out there, um, 
we then drafted another report, Darius and I were on the phone doing the robo message to the parents. So we wanted to be consistent with that. Um, at no time was anyone in any danger. At no time was there anything on school property. Um, had this happened five, 10 years ago, it probably would have been an internal incident and wouldn't have been known. Um, but social media being what it is, um, you almost you know, have to get ahead of it, which is sometimes impossible because we're all in the middle of doing other things. It's not like we're waiting around during the school day for something to occur. And so things don't often happen or always happen in real time. Meetings interrupted or you don't get the message right away. So I just wanted to explain a little further. I don't know if you wanted to add anything more to what no, I mean, I, I, the term I used, it hijacks your day, in a sense. It did. And we don't day. know, you know, it, you know, essentially it's a student discipline matter, and so we, you're not going to go into the specifics of it, and, you know, to protect that student and um, the mistake he made, and he's going to have consequences for it. I already gave too much for saying he. Um, but, you know, we don't know where it's, what's going to go. And it's going to go nowhere, and that's perfectly fine with us because we handle the situation. And then once it gets out, then we have to react and go on from there. So, um, so, I mean, that's kind of, you know, that's where it's right. at. And that's how every every situation is. It's, you know, you have to control the situation here, and then at the same time, you got to get information out. And meanwhile, you know, a student texts their parents and goes off a rumor, and then you got to, and so it's very difficult about, we play that fine line of what we should be putting out there to everybody versus what is, what's better not being said. Because in a situation like this, you know, a little bit of information is, you know, can spread like wildfire when, when it's wrong so and it's another example of not being able to control what is out there in the media I mean you know we've been portrayed in newspaper articles recently about having quoted or making it sound like we've talked to reporters when we have not um, people can take partial truths from reading partial reports and print that and not print the whole story and we have no control over that so, but please know that whenever an incident like this occurs, um, Darius always contacts me immediately, and or as immediately as he can, and we are always in contact with the police when we do things as a unit because we do not want misinformation or um, glorified or whatever. We, we want we want the same consistent message from everyone. Now, why were the police called to begin with? Why were the police called to called begin to with? Called to begin with. Was, um, was there a crime committed? Was there a sus belief or a suspicion that a crime may have been committed? Mm -hmm. I, I mean, so being in a public meeting on film, I'm not sure I'm comfortable going into the specifics of why the police were called. We could go into executive well, session if you want to talk about building security. And we're perfectly is, within is, our, our rights to and talk I about would be, I'd be more than happy to explain the details of everything. But um, when dealing with when dealing with things of this sensitive nature, um, we take, um, while in the end it was a toy, when things are started, things were not viewed as a toy. And so, you know, we get we take safety and student safety at the utmost level, and, and police are a part of that, especially when, um, again, and I get to give the specifics of thank you for going to that. I think um, we should thank you and you know, for the way you handled it and um, put our trust in you. But I would like to thank you for sending that email as soon as you did because as we have all said before in the past, it's just not nice to have somebody come up and tell you something mm -hmm. that everybody else knows and you're on the school committee. So I was, I was totally fine with the email. And again, I thank you for the way you've handled things. And I personally would have involved the police in any incident such as that. So I think it was a good call, but that's my personal feeling. And you had to do what you felt was correct. Listen, I, and, and for this first committee, if you guys ever have any questions on these things, give me a call and I can answer you know, the best I can, or I'm more than happy to go to executive session, explain step by step, and we can critique 
versus policy about how we handle things. Bill, do you want to go in executive session? Uh, sure. Make the motion. Well, I just want to know what, details. If you really you want to know details. Details. a lot details. more details. You can't. But. You can't. It's, it's a fed, the federally protected. Mary is rights. shaking her head. I, I just think a fewer people that have all the details better. Yeah. I don't think we need It's not, yeah. It's, it's against the students' privacy rights. Judy? Well, I agree we can't talk about the individual involved, but if we want to talk about the security and the procedures that should be employed and how they were employed, we can talk about that. And, uh, you know, it may be useful for some of the board members to understand some of that stuff. And I'm sure most of them do. I don't want people to be uncomfortable about the situation because a lack of talking about it makes us feel like we're hiding something. That's right. not, definitely not what I want to feel. So. Honestly, if you want, if you want to go to executive session, and I can, as long as I, you know, Marty, can, I'll come sit next to Marty, and so we can confer that I don't cross the, the line about um, student privacy rights as we talk about that. I can give a layout of you know what was done, and so that you guys feel safe about the school. So the last thing I want my committee feel like things were not done that was in a safe manner. Because I'm just feeling a little the tension's weird in the room. So you know what I mean? I, it's I'm completely comfortable with how things were handled today. So I have no problem discussing I am too. it. And so I am absolutely <clears throat> it, it's, a, it's a non, it's a non event. It's only an event because non it's only an event because New Center twenty two right. like started posting. Right. Phil, if you want to watch Channel Forty News at eleven o'clock, it probably will give you all the details because it was on at five thirty <laughs> on Channel Forty. Well, I mean, I know we it, it, there's after. a lot to this. Well, stuff. I'm just saying. If okay, you want to okay. As chair, I'm going to make a chair okay. decision here. I'm going to ask that we go into executive session. Patty, write it up Patty's however we can kick patty out we can kick john out we will come out just in the meeting so you don't have to come back okay. so um, i'm not sure of the number but we can get that afterwards so i've made that motion can i have a second all those in favor i don't know i know i heard it oh, i'm sorry i know that i have to get my roll call phil cantor yes robert decker yes damien foss no yes Take yeah. me a few moments here. <laughs> Bill Mayor PV is absent. Mary Raymond? Yes. Judy Pierce? No. Lynn Roberts? No. Keith McFarland is not here. Bill Smith? No. And Bob Hollow? No. And Cindy Womatt? No. Well, I guess it didn't pass. And we do not go into executive session. Do adjourn, Madam Chairman. Do I have a second? Second. Those in favor? Aye. Thank you very much. John, you still get to go home.